here you're looking to find out the five, plus an honorable mention, most important Robert Rodriguez movies you need to see to understand everything Robert Rodriguez. I can certainly help you, but then after this, you're going to have to help me retrieve some gold from a local Aztec pyramid. And so I've got a map inside this little thing. I bought it from a local street merchant. Look, that's not important. What's important right now is these movies. We'll discuss the plans for this afterwards. Honorable mention, El Mariachi. This movie is fantastic. I've watched it probably 10 times, at least five times regular, and then another five times with the commentary by Rodriguez on the, the uh, tracks. The, whatever. It's here. I'm not going to move it. Everything will fall down. It'll be like Jack. So obviously, I love the movie. The problem is, is uh, it it's made for like $15,000 or something like that. It was made dirt cheap. Um, and the problem is, is it looks like it was made for $15,000. Um, before iPhones and everybody getting out there and just making all these really cool movies, uh, you know, where I can't believe they made that on a home computer. You know, it, a normal person couldn't make those type of movies. So much like Clerks or, uh, you know, to a little bit of Reservoir Dogs and a bunch of other like indie movies in the 90s. Robert Rodriguez made El Mariachi with the intention of selling it to uh, the local Mexican TV market. So he, you know, or maybe even try to get it in the uh, uh, video stores. It's like an action movie, but a real low budget. And, and he's a very talented director. So he ended up making a movie that uh, people wanted to see. And he entered it in a bunch of like film contests, you know, Sundance and all these other independent like spotlight movie things. So what he did to get by ended up becoming like great art. So for example, he had a dog available and he had a turtle available and he would just get still shots of the dog and the turtle. And then when he needed a cutaway, so if he needed a better line from a, a different take, he could just steal it from there and cut between the two with the dog or the turtle. But then like all these kind of like phony art house people watched the movie and were like, oh, I think the dog and the turtle have deep meaning. And really it was just kind of his like, you know, quick way to solve a problem. And that's what I love about this dude. He's the master of solving problems on the cheap. He's the original like grindhouse, make it on the quick, you know, make it with your friends, make it fast, uh, shoot everybody out in a couple days to keep the budget low. That way you can have all sorts of good stars in it. You know, he's a very super efficient filmmaker and uh, on his DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, and I think they're all over YouTube now. You can probably find they're like 10 minute film schools. Just, you know, look for Robert Rodriguez. Um, and you can see he gives all these pointers and tips of how to improve your movies. And that was one of the things I look, watched early on that inspired me to make my own films and stuff. So, you know, he's, he's part filmmaker, but he's also part uh, teacher. You know, so his films aren't always the best. They're not the most polished. You know, I obviously prefer a good Scorsese film over a Robert Rodriguez film. But, you know, a movie like Desperado and all these, he's just great. So uh, the problem is with, with El Mariachi is it looks like an early on movie. And, you know, a normal person might watch it and be like, why are you watching this cheap crap? And especially the fact that it's foreign language and, you know, you can get a good overdub, but, uh, you know, the best way to watch it is probably in original Spanish. But uh, yeah, definitely check out El Mariachi if you're way low, but otherwise it's honorable mention, you know, uh, for a reason on this list. Numero cinco, Machete. Uh, when Tarantino and Rodriguez teamed up to make the Grindhouse movies, uh, you know, part of that cheap charm of making, it, it, it's really hard to make bad things properly. Like people overdo it, you know? So satire is incredibly difficult. So when Tarantino and, and Rodriguez make those Grindhouse movies, the amazing thing that I think people kind of missed is just how on the beat you know like how on the nose they were for getting what they wanted to get right so uh he goes back to the well after doing planet terror and does this second series of machete which was a trailer in the grindhouse series you know he turned that into a, a movie i think it might have been some part of some contest or whatever but i make things up um 
so it's him and his buddy Danny Trejo. They make Danny Trejo the big superhero he needs to be. You know, he kicks all the ass. It's got like kind of this early 80s uh, directive video plot. Um, but it's absurd and it's a wild ride. It's total like schlocky, campy fun. But like I say, it's so hard to do satire and camp just right. And Rodriguez nails it. Like that's probably the reason he went back to it twice. But um, yeah, check out Machete. Numero Cuatro, Planet Terror. Like I was just talking about with Machete, the first movie that came out from this grindhouse uh, experience that him and Tarantino got themselves into was uh, this Planet Terror. And it's uh, um, just loaded with people, Josh Brolin and Fergie and uh, I don't know, all these other people that they, they poke in and they're perfect. Uh, Tarantino himself plays a real weirdo creep in it. Um, Michael Ironside in it? Anyways, there's a surprise cameo by a great actor, Bruce Willis. Um, and it's just, it's a wild ride, but it's this zombie kind of John Carpenter homage movie. It's got the Carpenter score and everything. So it's, 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 I love it personally, but it's lower on the list because it's going to be less palatable to people who aren't into that grindhouse 1980s video cassette culture. You know, the, the drive-in theater movie where you go see a double feature and eat a weird piece of pizza that may or may not be repurposed from the garbage can of the local pizza place or whatever. Numero tres, Desperado. Desperado is uh, the kind of the classic film uh, maker's story. They make their first movie dirt cheap. And everybody loves it. You know, Evil Dead 1 becomes Evil Dead 2. Lock, Stock, and Smoking Barrels becomes Snatch. Uh, Reservoir Dogs becomes Pulp Fiction. Uh, so El Mariachi becomes Desperado. It's a sequel, but it's also a reboot. You know what I mean? How they do that with the thing with the rebooting and the sequels and whatnot. So, uh... This one is a much better, fully focused, you know, how would I make El Mariachi if I actually had the money to make El Mariachi, you know? So Desperado is that. It's Banderas and Salma Hayek and, um, you know, it's this action-adventure ride, a whole bunch of, like, ridiculous shoot 'em up of, you know, explosions and the fighting and then the guitars and then the you know just all of it the dudes walking away from the explosions all cool and it's absurd to look at but it's still it's just so cool where you know rodriguez does that better than anybody he just has he does hero shots he's the, the king of the hero shot you know so uh him and salma hayek walking away in slow motion as both of their hair blows all beautifully in the wind it's he, he kind of made that uh, amazing, beautiful thing that it just became a cliche later on. So um, check out Desperado because it's, you know, like I say, important in film history, but it's also nice to see what a original filmmaker would do, you know, difference between $7,000 budget and a whatever, how many ever millions of dollar budget. Numero dos, from dusk till dawn. As I mentioned, Robert Rodriguez is like this frequent collaborator, you know, supposed best friend type dude with Quentin Tarantino. Like they're, you know, frequent buddies who bounce ideas off of each other and stuff. And uh, uh, they worked on the ground, how, grindhouse stuff together. And they, they became friends doing the festival circuit when they both were coming up originally. So, you know, they were young and they kind of were like had a buddy who was going through the same thing. So because of that, they frequently do stuff together, like the grindhouse movies and um you know, this, the their first collaboration, where it's an old script of Tarantino's that he had intended for the people who make Walking Dead to turn into a movie. So um, that never happened, and Tarantino ended up getting it back and getting it uh, Robert Rodriguez to go through and make it for him. And Robert Rodriguez does Quentin Tarantino's style, which is so cool. Like, it's uh, Robert Rodriguez's tones in mood, but it also feels like a Tarantino movie because uh, Rodriguez is trying to copy what Tarantino does. So it's well, 
Robert Rodriguez is one of, I don't know, this and number one are just so amazing to me because uh, the Desperado is an action movie. It's just a good action movie. But this is a director doing someone else's work, but not like Gus Van Sant reshooting Psycho shot for shot. You know, it's it's more uh, seeing the world through Quentin's eyes. And that's why I admire Rodriguez, his ability to do that, you know, not just like be selfless and give up his style, but, you know, do it Tarantino's way. But it also, because Rodriguez is doing it, it's going to have Rodriguez's, you know, tone no matter what. So uh, that's one of the reasons it's great. It's a, it, it's a crime drama. It gives uh, George Clooney his first chance to really be a star in this movie. And then Tarantino's kind of there, you know, like... He, he was trying to get into acting. He's mediocre, okay? He, he does all right in this because Robert Rodriguez knows how to shoot around people and shoot stuff fast and cut away. So, you know, if Tarantino gets a little hammy or whatever, they just cut away on him. But uh, three different characters played by Cheech Marin. Um, uh, it's got a crime drama for the uh, story that really hooks you. And then just when you're hooked, yeah, from dusk till dawn. So, dusk till dawn. Numero uno, Sin City. Rodriguez is sort of masterpiece of creativity. You know, he, uh, like I said, he was able to mimic Tarantino style when he did From Dusk Till Dawn. And then he was also like able to do the sort of a definitive uh, genre defining movie that people sort of copy in their own way. Like uh, the, the Fast and the Furious movies owe a lot to Desperado and you know, it's, it's sort of the post-action movie, action hero movie, you know what I mean? Like, it knows Schwarzenegger and, and them exist, so it's like, okay, I'm going to do all the diehard coolness in this. So, um, when Sin City comes along, he's like a Jedi, and he knows all the tricks, and he's got a whole bag full of them. And then he does this kind of innovative camera thing where everything looks like a black and white comic, which is just beautiful and amazing, and some of the shots feel like you're looking at a panel in a comic book. Um, Mickey Rourke, Elijah Wood, uh, Bruce Willis, once again, he's awesome. Um, so yeah, I would say that's probably the most important Robert Rodriguez movie because you can see that this dude is just on an artistic level that other people really aren't, but he's an ability to do it so cheap, which is what makes it amazing. You know, he's, he's got a style unto himself, but he's able to mimic other styles. He's just incredibly talented. Um, you know, I'd like to see him do more stuff, but he kind of got caught up making Spy Kids movies and focusing on the El Rey channel and some other stuff. So, um, either way, uh, Robert Rodriguez is still a great director, and I would recommend checking out all of these movies in particular, the uh, top three. They're, you know, a, a great triple feature, or at least uh, pick one of your favorites to do a double feature with, you know? All right, adios, amigos. Let's go, uh, let's go get that gold. Let's go get that gold.